Okay, so for this video, uh, we're going to talk about sexing tarantulas. And I get a lot of people who are getting into the hobby or who maybe have had tarantulas for a while and they're just wondering the best way to determine whether their tarantula is a male or a female. Because that does play into a couple different aspects of keeping as far as how long you'll have your tarantula and uh, whether or not you choose to breed them or not. Because male tarantulas, once they reach sexual maturity, depending on which species you have, they generally start to lose steam uh, for their kind of will to live. Uh, because in the wild, male tarantulas, their goal is just to breed. And when they reach sexual maturity, they get something that are called emboli, which are on their pedipalps, which are located on their pedipalps. And uh, that actually goes from the outside of the exoskeleton to the inside of the exoskeleton. And that's a reproductive organ that they use for uh, inseminating the females. And so when a male reaches sexual maturity uh, and he gets those emboli on his pedipalps, the next time that he goes to molt, uh, his pedipalps will get stuck in his molt and he will uh, die, end up dying and getting stuck in his molt. And so uh, a lot of people find that having a female is much more desirable since when females reach sexual maturity, they don't change in any physical way. Uh, they might show a little bit of the more mature coloration, but uh, no outward you know, general uh, appearance changes like you see in the males. And so they can continue living for much, much longer, several years longer than the males, you know, depending on which species you've got. And so uh, what I've got right here are a couple of tarantula exoskeletons or exuvum and uh, the technical term. But I've got some, you'll often find when your tarantula molts, you'll have a exoskeleton crumpled up in the corner of the enclosure like this or if they're an arboreal tarantula in their burrow and then when they're ready they'll kick that exuvum out of the burrow and uh, kind of tidy things up and then what I've got right here are just a couple paper clips you know keep it simple stupid uh, this will be used for opening up the um, back portion of the molt so that you can determine whether you've got a male or a female and uh, the other thing that you're going to need is just a little bit of water and uh, that is basically to loosen up these exoskeletons. And so when a tarantula molts, there's lots of oils on these exoskeletons. And so if you catch a tarantula right after it molts within a couple hours, these will still be, still be uh, soft and kind of pliable so that you can very easily open this up without the need of any of the water you can just straight open it up but if you are finding that it's you know a couple hours later a couple days later and you get your chance to get the exoskeleton out of the cage then it very often is going to be dry it's going to be much more rigid and it's very prone to breaking so what you're going to want to do is if it is an older exoskeleton like this you're going to want to wet it down a little bit and that way that will kind of readjust the oils in in the joints and allow this to kind of be opened up a little bit easier Easier, and that way we can get a determination on the sex of these tarantulas. So what I'm going to do here real quick is I'm going to spray these down and uh, that way I'll get those oils going and then we can start to open them up. So the uh, exoskeletons right here that we've got, these are from Brachypelmobomai, uh, which are a red leg or red knee kind of tarantula. Common names are kind of a bust because there's lots of different tarantulas that are referred to as red legs or red knees or painted legs and that sort of thing. So I generally prefer to use the Latin names because it gives you a much more specific idea of what specific species you're talking about. So you don't really need, this doesn't need to be like really soaking, but you do want to give it a chance to kind of wet, wetten up a little bit. You can see that it'll start to be able to be opened up a little bit more and once you I've got it open a little bit like this you might have to spray it down a little bit more there we go um, just just to make sure that everything opens up and generally what I like to do is I like to lay it out so it kind of looks nice you can always shadow box these which is something that I've gotten into recently where I get some some of my larger tarantulas molting and I'll put the uh, exoskeleton in a shadow box and, and glue it to the back so it looks really nice that way I can kind of hang it up on the wall have some nice art so uh, once you've got your exoskeleton laid out like this uh, the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to use your tools to open up this back portion right here and so you can see that a tarantula's exoskeleton or its covering generally covers the legs you can see eight legs and then in the front you can see the little tiny guys right front are called the pedipalps those are more like arms that they use kind of for holding on to their prey 
uh, not really so much for walking. You got to figure if they are going to be catching a large prey item and carrying it around. If uh, another predatory animal finds this tarantula and wants to decide to try and eat it, uh, if its front four legs are caught up holding onto a prey item, it's going to be very difficult for this tarantula to move away. So they've uh, got these small pity palps in the front to kind of help them with uh, food, and then also they can use it for excavation if they are a burrowing species or a species that will uh, make those sort of like tunnels or move substrate and things like that. So uh, they've got the petty palps up the front, the legs around the edges. Uh, inside here, we've got the chelicerae, which are where the fangs are attached to. The fangs are up underneath the chelicerae, with the chelicerae right here. And you got the central portion right here, where generally you would have the carapace. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, my makeshift table here kind of slipped. So. Like I was saying before, uh, you've got the uh, carapace right here, which is the top covering. And you can even see the, uh, the eyes, the openings where the eyes fit through the exoskeleton right there. And then you've got this uh, back portion right here, which is mostly just skin. And uh, a lot of people think that, uh, you know, spiders are these big, evil, nasty, jumpy, scary things. Um, but when you take a look at their anatomy, you'll see that uh, this back portion right here, that's just skin. This is actually where most of their vital organs are to keep them alive. So their heart, their stomach, their lungs, most of the things that keep a spider ticking are in this back area right here that's not protected by that exoskeleton. So uh, large terrestrial species like these Brachypelma species uh, are very, very prone to rupturing this abdomen if they are dropped or mishandled. So that's why I usually recommend if you are handling large terrestrial species, um, do so at your own risk, at the risk of the animal, really, because um, if you drop them from even a height of maybe a, a foot off the ground or off of a hard surface, rupturing this abdomen is fairly easy once they get to a decent size. So it's just something you want to avoid uh, doing because that's, like I said, that's where their heart, that's where their lungs, that's where their stomach is. Uh, these two little portions back here are called their spinnerets. That's where the silk comes from, where they do spin their web from, which is pretty neat. So I'm going to see if I can do this uh, in a way that you guys can see what's going on. What I'm going to try and do is open up this little portion right here so we can talk about uh, the anatomy of what's going on inside and so I can show you whether this specific molt is a boy or a girl. So let's see if I can get this in a spot where I can do that. Cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to just gently open this up. And you might need a little bit more water sometimes to do so. But you just want to very gently open this skin up right here. There we go. Perfect. So I hope you guys get to check that out. But, okay. So once you've got your exoskeleton laid out like this, uh, this is the portion where you'll be able to tell or determine whether you've got a male or a female tarantula. While it's still wet like this, it might be a little bit difficult to see, uh, but once it dries out, you'll be able to see very clearly. Okay, so what you're seeing on the inside here, so I was mentioning the spinnerets, that's where the silk comes from. Inside here, we've got these four white dots. Those are called the book lungs. That's where your uh, spider breathes through. And in this little area right here, um, there's generally a little opening and that's uh, where these animals will go to the bathroom from and it'll be in between this top set right here of book lungs. So you got one, two for the top set and then you got one, two for the bottom set. In between this first top set of book lungs, if you've got a male, it'll be smooth. So if you take a look in here, you'll see this is uh, fairly smooth in here. There's nothing in there. But in comparison, so I do have a female here so that I can show you guys a, what a female would look like. If you look, let me see if I can get this to focus, right in there. So if you look in this one, you'll see the book lungs, one, two up here. And if you look right in there, you'll see this little flap right here. That is what you're looking for. Uh, it looks different on uh, each species of tarantula, but all females will have this little flap in the middle right there. Trying to see if I can lift it up a little bit so you guys can see a little bit better. But uh, so your your comparison is your male over here is going to be completely smooth right in that area. It's going to be very, uh, very uniform. So you're not going to see any flap in here uh, in between this first set. And then when you go over to look at your female, you'll see this flap right here. So female... 
mail. Uh, hopeful, hopefully this was helpful in uh, y how you're uh, working with your animals and being able to determine whether you've got a male or a female tarantula. If you guys did enjoy this video, give my channel a subscribe. And uh, if you guys got a tarantula, I'd love to hear what species you keep. I keep quite a few. I think I'm hovering right around 80 or 100 tarantulas right now. And I've been keeping tarantulas pretty much my whole life. And uh, I look forward to doing, hopefully, some more videos on tarantulas in the near future. So if you guys did enjoy this, give me a subscribe, uh, hit the like button, and let me know what you guys keep for arachnids. This is Creeping It Real with Rob. Hope you guys enjoyed the video.